Worship. How about it, huh? Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. It's like uh, I always feel like I have to start with that because it's, it's so, so fresh and so good. I'm going to pray. Jesus, we worship you. We thank you and we love you. We ask you to, we thank you. I ask you to be here, but you're here. We thank you that you're here and you're among us, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to, uh, to speak to us, to clear our minds, so that we can, we can focus on, on what you have to say, God. We worship you. We love you, Jesus. There's no one like you. When they were singing um, the, I don't remember which worship song it is, but it says, "If something says you're not worth, if something says you're not worthy, uh, point to the empty grave." Like that, like meant a whole bunch to me when I was sitting there because um, I see. Did you guys see like the common theme in worship today? It was like it was like super hitting home. Um, and one of the other ones is the enemy thought he had me, but Jesus says you're mine. And that got me to thinking, um, praise God, that if the enemy thinks that he has me, that Jesus calls me, you know, calls me mine. And then I got to thinking, what if, you know, there's some times in our life where we think the enemy has us, you know? So it's like the enemy thinks he has us in here, but sometimes in life that we think that the enemy has us. Like, I'm stuck. This is no good. And like maybe you've been living something bad. You've been living in something bad. And then you just got to remember that even if you think the enemy has you, Jesus still says you're mine. So there's nothing that can, can push you further away. There's no attack that can happen on you to where you're hopeless. You know, right. Jesus always says, no matter what, you are mine. So if you're ever feeling hopeless and stuck and like, I've done bad things, or even if you haven't done bad things and you think you're just getting bombarded, just know and be rest assured that he says that I'm his. Like, that just gives you so much reassurance. And then also, the way maker. Um, I really needed this reminder today. And uh, even when you don't see it, let me see. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You, you never stop working. I don't know who needed that today, but I sure did, you know. I need that reminder that um, even if I don't see it, your promise is good. You're still working. And for me to think that you're not working would, would mean to call you a liar. You know what I mean? And then I just think sometimes, you know, Jesus, forgive me for thinking that you're, you're not always working. Because it says you never stop working. Even when I get tired, even when I go to bed, you're still working. And it's like he's tireless, and he's tireless for you. And we just need to remember that. And then all of a sudden it comes it as well. And it's like, oh, my gosh. So if I don't see it, you're working. If I don't feel it, you're working. And one thing I've got to remember, it is well. <laughs> what are you going through right now? You know what I mean? Guess what? It is still well, okay? This life only lasts for so long, you know? And it's, it's easy for me to say because I'm 35, but it's like, uh, there's only so much time you have on this life. It's so small, and if people could get it, it would be ridiculous. It's like the shadow passing on a basketball court. Like, that's the amount of time that's here. So in your struggles and your trials, man, it's so, it seems so easy to say, but in the moment, guys, was, was, we just got to keep posturing our hearts and, and building up trust in the Lord that when we go through these struggles, that I want that to be my first thing. No, it is well. It is well with my soul. Why? Because of who you are. Yep, I was waiting for that on the end. It is well. You know, they have that. Because of who you are, Lord. <laughs> I, I, like, I always like end up singing that part at the right time uh, when it's, I think it's Bethel. But thank you, guys. Worship team, like, super obedient. Like, I like, think you talked to Jesus, right? <laughs> you guys are awesome. All right, I'm going to be doing... Um, it's just kind of like a refresher, I guess you can say. Um, Matthew 6 is where I'll be, and it's a continuation of uh, like the Sermon on the Mount. 
And I was, uh, I was just reading through Matthew, and um, six kept hitting really home for me. Um, and I just kept kind of rereading it and rereading it and rereading it. Um, and then I'll just go, and I just want to kind of break down the way I understand it, and let's try to do it. All right, so Matthew 6, 1, it says, and what's really cool is these are all um, red letters. So that's super important. Jesus said those, you know. So when I, when I, when I read these red letters, um, you guys should, like, I, I, I challenge you guys to do this. Um, when you're reading the red letters, Jesus said it, right? Why aren't we excited about that? Like, I get to sit down and, Jesus, you said this right here. Like, why can't we open up our Bible with that tenacity? You know what I mean? Like, ooh, red letters. He said this. Okay. He says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. I love that he starts out six with an exclamation point. Watch out. Like, are you listening? Hey, watch out. Okay, you have my attention. And then he says, watch out, guys. Okay, Jesus says this. I'm going to pay attention. And he says, don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. Okay, so the good deeds that I do, there's a reward for them. That's really cool. I like that. (laughs) And then he says, obviously, and I think this kind of speaks for itself, but I'm just going to try to kind of hammer it home. Um, Obviously, you know, when when you give a gift and... This is some of the stuff that I was, like, talking with my kids about, too. Um, Like, even Ava asked me a little bit ago, like, what are you preaching about today? And I was like, well, don't don't give a gift and then point to yourself. You know, that's what it's saying. Don't, like, give something to somebody and be like, hey, you see that jacket over there? I gave that to him. Isn't that cool? (laughs) Ah, man, it was just a jacket, whatever. I did that, though. It was pretty cool. Um... When you give to someone in need, uh, verse 2, when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing their trumpets in the synagogue and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell, I love it, Jesus just says, I tell you the truth. Oh, okay. I'm listening again. They have received all the reward they'll ever get. Huh. Does it feel good when, like, you, you give a gift to somebody and then somebody, like, dang, you did that? Like, Good job, man. That's, that's really generous of you. Like, it feels good when somebody says that to you, you know? Um, and then what's really dangerous is, is when you give that gift and then you fish for that compliment. And that's what he's talking about. When you, when you give that gift and you're like, you know, does that van look familiar over there? Isn't that your old van? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like we got we to, gotta like, watch the posture of our heart. Uh, when we give something to somebody, you know? Um, when God tells you, like when God tells me, I know. When God says, hey, give. You know, even my watch, my shirt, whatever, I give it. Like, because I know when I hear it, it's good, you know? And then even if I have given a gift to somebody uh, later and you never see it again or something like that, hurts my feelings, but God had a plan for that. You know what I mean? Like, just because I don't see that watch doesn't mean that they don't see that watch and that um, what was attached to that, me giving out of love, you know, it's going to remind them, you know, there was, a, there was a humble, gracious guy who blessed me with this. I am, you know, I mean, it's just something, you don't know what's going to happen with that. Maybe that person views that, that gift as the world and you never knew it because you never see it, you know? Just keep it to yourself. Because <laughs> if you just, if you brag on about it, who are you pointing your, your fingers to? You know what I mean? Um, we should always point it to him, you know, and then why not just give a gift and let it slide, you know, because he says that there's a reward, and I would like that reward versus somebody being like, a boy, Jesse, that guy, he's charitable, he gives, you know, he gave out this, this, and that, like, come on, let's work on our heart, and it says, give your gifts in private, and your father who sees everything will reward you, I think that's really great, because it's he tells you, hey, give your gift in private. This is red letters here, okay? So, like, I take them hard. Um, give them in private, and, I, and your father, he does see it. He sees everything, and he'll reward you for it. So there's some people in this life, and I, and I, I get it a lot. Like, when I pray for them, they just um, they give, and they give, and they give, and people just take, and they take, and they take. 
um, there's a certain feeling I get when I, when I run into that kind of person. And I feel <clears throat> like I have to tell them every single time, like every time I like praying for somebody and I feel that, I feel it's like my obligation for God to be like, here, tell them, because this is kind of what they're talking about. You give and you give and you give and you give and people take and take and take, but God sees it and he, he smiles on it and he loves it. He'll reward you for it. I don't say the reward you for it because I want them to keep going and being that person, not for the reward, but because it's, it's who Jesus called them to be. They called him to be a lover and a giver. Givers are really nice. It was really nice to give. All right, uh, five. Let me see if I covered everything. Oh, okay. Um, something else in my notes. Um, you know when somebody says, you know, wow, you did that? You gave that? Good job. Um, that's all the reward you'll get, right? Um, so how much, how, how, like, I'm trying to say, like, how good does that feel to get that recognition? Um, but how much more good would it feel to get that from God? Um, like, we just don't even have a, a grid for it. You know, like, the humans can praise you, but when God really says, and speaks to you and says, yes, that's good. You know, when you get that moment, we're not positioned to hear that from God sometimes because we're seeking human attention. We're seeking human gratification. But if we just, like, try it, guys, like, what is God putting on your heart to give somebody? Give it and try to be as quiet as possible about it. Like, make it your own sneaky little thing between you and God. You can't outgive God, though, but you can try. <laughs> All right. Let's do five. And I love this, too. And we're just talking about prayer. Oh, yeah, if you guys can make it on Wednesdays, it's, it's beautiful. The atmosphere is just, it's, like, we, uh, like, walk in here from youth, and it's definitely a time of refreshing. And it's, um, a, I love just that worship in, like, intimate settings where God can just speak to you and speak to you, and there's nothing going on but you listening to him. You know what I mean? And then you can, he can give you avenues to pray and everything. If you haven't done it, try to make a commitment to do it. Just be like, you know what, I'm going to go one time this month, you know? And I know one time turns into two, turns into three, turns into four, and it's all good. Tricks, he tricks you that way. <laughs> all right, number five. When, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth. That is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Boy, we've heard that in the previous right here. Who sees everything will reward you. Um, He's really hammering at home here that God's watching. You know what I mean? That God sees everything. Don't think that what you're doing is for nothing. Like, he sees it. He smiles upon it. He breathes upon it. He kisses it. He loves it. He loves it when you do these kind of things. And um, what's really important, I love the, you know, don't, don't pray publicly and uh, make a spectacle of it and everything like that. Because that is, if you're doing that, then go home. Like, that is not what God desires for you just to stand up here and let me give a, a nice, beautiful, eloquent prayer. And uh, yeah, man, Jesse really pray. Can, can you tell me how good I pray? Like, come on, like this guy pray. You know what I mean? Like, don't get your heart. Don't get a heart motive like that. If, if you're going to pray, do it out of straight relationship with Jesus. Plug yourself into the vein and really like just focus on his face. Like I can't like to... Um, I'm just trying to explain kind of like what I feel like when I pray and then when you because it's so important that in like my younger years I didn't know like how to jump in how to get in how to like get into that flow when I like didn't necessarily feel it you know and it, it just took a realization of what I was doing was talking to him and sometimes and yeah I'll, I'll get into it here but sometimes we can we can lose sight of that like, they're just words sometimes, you know? Um, like, when my kids pray before they eat, it used to be, uh, thank you, God, for this food. Bless our body. Keep us strong and healthy. Amen. And then pretty soon it got to be, 
Thank you, Jesus, for his food. Bless his body. Jesus, God, amen. And then start eating. And it's like, what are we doing? Like, that's the exactly opposite of what we're trying to do here. Thank you, Jesus. Like, even if it's you say the same thing, put some life on it. Thank you. See his face when you talk to him. Thank you, Jesus. That you're real. That you love me. Thank you that you're happy with me. I thank you that no matter what I go through, it is well. Golly, he's so, he's so beautiful. You just got to take a moment to look at him. And if you're ever feeling like really, really dry, um, just get alone, man. Like he says, he says, get alone. Close the door, your private place. If you guys don't have one of those, I got six girls, so it's kind of you know, hard to find a private place, but wake up early. <laughs> wake up before anybody else. Stay up later than anybody else. <laughs> How are you going to fight for your time with Jesus? I, don't, I know when I get to the end of my life, I don't want to be like, sorry, I got to, you know, you only gave me a four-bedroom house. Got eight people here. I don't know what you want me to do. Like, that's not the kind of relationship that God desires either. He was like, will you seek me? <laughs> Will you go and shut the door and say, hey, sorry, you know, like my, my daughter, sorry, um, I don't have, like, I'm not sure I don't have time for you, but this is not the time for you. I'm, daddy's going to go be with Jesus, you know what I mean? And also, I don't want that to, to look like blowing my trumpet in the street, too, so I'm going to try to just go away quietly. But my kids will know that door shut, daddy's worshiping Jesus, because it's an example. And there's times of like corporate family worship too, but I want my I want my kids to see that, and that's also also hard too. Like I want them to see it, but I do it before they get up. You know, um, maybe when it starts to get older, and we can we can start to respect boundaries, and maybe we get a bigger house, then it can go <laughs> a certain different way. But I love it. Go away by yourself, because that's what he wants, right? And and what what that means to me, go away by yourself. Don't take any of your junk with you. Like, you're going in there to be with him. Like, why are you bringing a lot of other stuff with you? A lot of baggage, a lot of hurt. You know, I mean, you can bring that stuff to him, but get that stuff out of the way, you know? Get the business, get it out of the way, because there's, he just wants to be with you, you know? Like, let's stop going into prayer and asking God for something every time. Let's just, let's just be and go in our private place just to adore him. You know what I mean? Let's go into our private place and say, you know what? 10 minutes today, I'm going to shut the door and I'm going to, I'm going to walk back and forth and I'm going to do nothing but declare your goodness. You're merciful. You're loving. You're kind. What would that do for your life? You know, how would that change your perspective? And guess what? You're building relationship with the one who is, and you're also adoring him. You're not asking him for anything. You're just saying, I'm here only because you are. You always will be. That's why I'm meeting you today, because I need you. I need to be poor in spirit. I need everything that you are because you are everything I'm not. And it'll change your life if you can just, you know, there's your, your prayer time, but then five minutes apart for adoring him. Then the other, other five minutes praying in tongues. And then see where your, where your life changes. When you pray, I like this part, um, seven, when you pray, don't babble on and on as other people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Dang, <laughs> he already knows. What are you waiting for? He's waiting to help you. He's waiting to, to come alongside you. He's, he's a good dad who gives good gifts. Ask him. Nothing's too big for him. Like when I, when I meet people sometimes, I'm like, what's a miracle in your life? Just one cr- absolutely crazy thing that if it happened this week, you would be like, Jesus is real. Ask him. Pray for it. Have faith for it. Go meet a random person and say, you need a miracle in your life? I do. Have faith for it. Pray for him. Ask God. Go home and ask God. Get with him. Shut that door. See what he says about what you need right now. That miracle that you have, what if you shut the door 
and you blocked out all your problems, all your worries, and you say, God, I need this. What do you think? And he will definitely tell you. He'll breathe on it. He'll confirm it. All right, I love it. Don't be like them, for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Pray like this. (laughs) It's so beautiful. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now, what I find absolutely stunning about this, this is the NLT version, too. I know the, it's differently in different versions of the Bible. But I love how crafty Jesus is right here. Um, when you pray, don't babble on and on. Like, don't, they're not just words, right? How many of us have heard this prayer growing up all of our lives, right? And then uh, how many times has this prayer just been emotion? And it's the same exact thing that Jesus told us to stay away from. You know what I mean? So when I read this, it's not, you know, I just get flashbacks to the Presbyterian Church and we do like the Apostles' Creed and stuff like that, just like repetitive. And I don't know what the Catholic Church does or anything like that. But when we say this prayer... Like I was saying before, put some life on it. You know what I mean? Make it special. Make it the first time you're seeing this, you know? Oh, and change the words up. My Father, you are in heaven. God, may your kingdom come soon. Like, just focus on the words that you're saying and don't babble on and on. You know what I mean? Because there's this this prayer is, is sweet, and it's like he's giving you... If you don't, it's really cool because he's like, if you don't know how to pray, pray like this. But he's not saying, say these exact words every time. He's saying, hey, here's a template to talk to the Father. You know, if you, because you're asking me what to say. So here's an example. But this example, don't just replicate it and babble on and on and on. Prayer is about an intimate relationship with God. You know what I mean? It's not just something that's repetitive. Okay. Um, Five minutes, I'm praying today. Uh, Let's see what the list is. All right. Like, yes, prayer list, perfect, fabulous. Keeps you structured, keeps you on point, but leaves some room to let the spirit flow. And I'm sure people who have a prayer list and do all that, they do that. Yeah, I love it because I wrote my notes. This is basically, here's how you have a conversation with the Father. Like, if you don't know... And it's so cool if you're talking to somebody who's never like, I've never prayed before. What do I do? Oh, sweet. Let's go to Matthew 6. Let's just show you what it says here. And then I love um, what it says here in the next on 14. Um, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive you. So I love how he said this prayer. And in the prayer, it said, and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. So when he's saying this prayer, people are probably like, "Hmm, what's that part about sinning again that you said? Okay, here, let me clear it up for you. If you forgive those who sin against you, then God will will forgive you, you know? So I love how he, he doesn't leave any, like, mystery up to it. Oh, no, 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 you read that right. And here, let me hit it home just one more time directly after. So doesn't that seem like it's important? (laughs) It's here, and then it's right here again. Um, Who sinned against you guys? Why haven't you forgiven them yet? Grow up, right? It's easy. Jesus, help us make that easy. When somebody sins against you, help me make it easy. Heal my heart. Protect my heart. So that when I go through this, bitterness doesn't take hold of my life. Envy doesn't take hold of my life. Strife. You don't, you don't need to spend time thinking about that person who sinned against you because that's what the devil wants you to do. What did, remember what they did to you? Can you believe what they did to you? The audacity of that person. No. I don't even think about that person anymore. Forgive them. God bless them. God bless what they're doing. You know? 
and I have like opportunities in my life where it keeps coming up again and again and again, and that's why God's hammering it home again and again and again. Because if it keeps coming up, I still have that problem, you know? There's that sanctification, and I need to realize that if somebody has sinned against me, why am I going to waste my time thinking about how they hurt me, or how they hurt my family, or how they hurt my friends? Just get over it. Let's just be big boys and say, you know, God, you are my champion. It is well with my soul. I know that you are my protector, and I know that you didn't have this plan for this to happen in my life. So, God, I'm asking you, take it away. I cannot deal with it. Watch him work. Forgive him, guys. It's tough. I just feel it again, like, mm -hmm, you don't know. That's not, you know, you don't know what they did. I don't, but he does. Because remember, he sees everything. Forgive him. Heal. Move on. It's easy for me to say, right? And I love uh, this one, too. I just love the Bible. I just keep saying it. And when you fast, don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled, so people will admire them for their, fa <laughs> for their fasting. I tell you the truth, the only reward, I tell you the truth, that is the only reward they'll ever get. Man, if God's calling you to fast, ugh, stop, you know what I mean? Like, do this right here. <laughs> if you're feeling... Like, you're weak because, you, you know, you guys have been on those fasts, right? Where you're only on a water one for a couple of days, and you're like, oh, what's wrong, Jesse? <sighs> Man, I've been fasting. The Lord's really been speaking to me. No food, three days. Come on, man. It's easy to kind of try to go there, you know what I mean? Because uh, it's nice to people to be like, keep going, man. Keep going. You don't need those tears from people. You know what I mean? You're fasting. You're, you're making this thing with God. Keep it between you and him. Because people don't know what you're going through. They're not with you at the night when you're hungry and you want to go raid the fridge and you know that you made this commitment with God that I'm going to fast and seek your face. And then I get hungry and what do I do? I seek your face. You don't need anybody else to tell you good job or wow, you believe that? No way. That is the only reward you'll ever get. You're fasting, man. Keep that to yourself. Seems like there's like a big like money maker on that one. I love a uh, I love a good Daniel fast. Um, I absolutely, extremely dislike fruits and vegetables. So when when God calls man a Daniel fast, I get really super excited um, because I know that uh, there's an amount of revelation that happens in my life, and I realize how dirty and yucky my uh, eating habits are, and also how it just, I don't know, man. If you guys haven't fasted, try it. Do like a, like a two, three-day fast, or even like a one-day one fast. Don't, you know what I mean? If you guys are interested in fasting, we can talk about it. It's, it's a lot of fun. You keep it to yourself. Because <laughs> it's fun. It's like a challenge. It's like an endurance. Like, oh, man, I haven't eaten three days for you. Help me, clear my mind, clear my body, reset me, seeking your face. And this is what I'm giving up, you know? What are you going to, oh, I just, man, we could go all day on fasting. Come on, guys, what are you giving up? What are you giving up? What are you giving up? Let's all go on a fast. What do you say? Isn't there like a corporate fast going on right now? When did that start? It ended today. I missed my opportunity. I'm so excited. <laughs> You guys would think I just got done with a fast or something. Maybe I did. You guys will never know. <laughs> no. I, in fact, did not get done with a fast. <laughs> Unless you count not eating yesterday, but it's just because I was busy. Didn't count as fasting. Okay. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, then no one will notice that you are fasting except your father who knows what you do in private, and your father, what does he do? He's everything and will reward you. Man, isn't that hitting home? Sounds like God sees everything, right? I think we all knew that from a little kid. All right. I think I'm going to... I didn't want to dive into this next part because it would go 
I'm going to touch base on it a little. All right, don't store up treasures in heaven here on earth where moth eat them and rust destroy them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. What are your treasures in heaven, though, you know? For me, in my opinion, it, all, it seems kind of like uh, this is all the reward they'll ever get. This is all the reward they'll ever get. I'm telling you, this is all the reward they'll ever get. Door them up in heaven, guys. Do your good stuff. You don't have to blow it and blow it in the street corners to let everybody know. Just do it. Go, I mean, there's a difference between sharing a testimony and pointing at yourself, you know? Like when you share a testimony, if you can't share the good thing that you did with the right motive, keep it to your dang self. You know what I mean? Because um, you can do a lot of good things for you know bad reasons to point to yourself. And if, if your heart's not in a position to point to God, you know what God did? God showed me this guy. And he said, da 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 and, I, and then, you know what I mean? Like, and it, just ha it happens, too, when somebody's like, oh, man, that word you gave me, I can't believe it. Uh, like, dude, I'm just Jesse. That's it. Like, there's, there's nothing great about me, but the one who is in me is great. Always point to him. Never take it for yourself, because that's the only reward you'll ever get. And besides that, um, when God speaks through you, like, he chooses to speak through you, you know? And a lot of times he'll speak through you because that person just isn't listening. Um, so I, you know, I feel honored when, you know, God will give a word and stuff like that. But I just know that that's the way he operates and he wants to operate that way in everybody. So if anything good happens in your life and somebody, you know, wants to, you're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. Come on, man, point back to him. You, you know what? You know why that you think that I'm awesome? Let me tell you about him. His name is Jesus, and he gave his life for me. And he made it so that I can have the brain capacity to even think about you in a well way. Otherwise, I would walk straight past you and worry about my own business like the flesh wants to do. I love this. Your eye is a lamp that provides light to your body. When your eye is good, your whole body will be filled with light. But when your eye is bad... Your whole body will be filled with darkness. Then if the light you think you have is actually darkness, this is how deep that darkness is. Ay. What do you guys look at on a day-to-day -day basis? You know? What are you spending your time with your eyeballs on? You know? This has made it so easy to be distracted. So, 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 so easy. I remember when I was a kid, um, I was talking to my kids, and they were kind of pouting a little bit, and I was like, mm, I was like, you guys don't know how good you have it. Like, my, my mom and dad, and I'm sure a lot of parents did this, but they were like, nope, sun's up, outside. You need water? Drink from the hose. <laughs> you ain't coming in until lunch, and after lunch, you're going back out. But you better be back before that sun goes down, or else you, we're going to have problems. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and, and my kids are like, we don't get to go swimming in our pool today, and I'm like, I had to walk miles to go to a pool, and even then I had to try to scoop up change to pay the dollar to get in. Like, I'll give you whatever you need whenever you want it. I don't know where I got off on that one. <laughs> I was going somewhere with that. And, all right, sorry. My daughter turned 13 years old, and I felt like I had to reintroduce myself to her. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm your dad. Nice to meet you. It's like every... Uh, I know people said, wait till they get older. When they're teenagers, it's going to be this. And I'm like, no, don't speak that over my life. No, thank you. Not going to happen. Day after 13, I'm like, pray for me, guys. Pray for me. <laughs> 
because I just feel like, uh, you know what I mean? It's just weird. It's a weird transition for me. Like, I'm trying to work out these feelings that I'm feeling because I feel like I failed her when she gets mad at me. But no, she's just actually being a certain kind of way. And I'm just like, nope, you're still cool. You're still a good dad. You're still everything. But man, teenagers are tough. But yeah, I was getting on cell phones and every, whatever they have all, all these times. Um, it's so easy to look at bad stuff. It's so easy, you know. Um, even like horror movies or thriller movies or even you see something on Facebook and next thing you know you click on it and then all of a sudden you're like looking at all these funny photos and then there's like a couple bad ones in there but they're not so bad so I'm just gonna keep scrolling and then pretty soon not so bad becomes into, oh what? Yeah, like something you wouldn't even take the time of day to even put in your life. It's all it takes is just that little bit, you know, just for Satan to sneak his foot into the door when you try to shut it. It's all the same thing. Whatever you look at, then here, you know what I mean? You're looking at this Bible? Wait, even better, are you looking at his face? Ooh, how much more are you filled with light? But how sad. I get so sad when I read this part, and I'm like, woo, don't, no thank you. And if you, and if the light you think you have actually darkness, there's some people that are, this is okay. This is no big deal. I've been doing that since I was a kid. Not a big deal. And I'm still a good person. You know what I mean? Like, boy, they're so full of dark and they don't even know it. And they think that their dark is light. And I'm thinking, how can I come along somebody, alongside somebody and love them out of that darkness that they think is light? Ugh, what a struggle. I don't speak that. Not what a struggle because Jesus will make a way. It seems like a struggle. It seems like a big deal, but ask him, God, make that way. Make that straight. Lighten up that darkness. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This is why I tell you, all right. Um, you guys remember that analogy that was brought in a couple times where um, there's, there's somebody that's on a fence, and there's God on this side, and there's the devil on this side, and this person's just walking the fence, and then next thing you know, God's people go up, devil's people go down, and this person's still on the fence. It's kind of weird. And then uh, the devil comes up and says, hey, come on, bud. And I, what? No. I was like, I didn't, I didn't choose God's side, and I certainly didn't choose your side. And then Satan says, hey, I own the fence. Come on, bud. You know, somebody who's on the fence, like if you, if you love this and love this, you can't serve two masters. You can't be on a fence. God doesn't desire that. God's jealous for you. You think he's going to let you just stay on a fence and be like, we're cool, bro? No. He wants that commitment. He wants that jumping both feet in. I am yours, and I surrender everything. I surrender all. Do you, do you let work and money get in, in front of your relationship with Jesus? I'm so busy today. I'm so tired. I'll just, just think I'll just go to bed early. No. You go in there and stick with your Bible reading plan, and then you go to bed early. Who are you serving? You, you aren't, you, I mean, too busy serving God all day that you didn't have time to go make money? That'd be better. Of course, you'll still fulfill it. Where are your priorities at, you know? Money's a big deal. It's a real, it's a real thing. We need money to, to do some stuff. And right now, I'm going through a season in my life where I don't know how God's doing it, but I got money in my bank account, and it's awesome. And um, I used to serve money, um, like, a, like not even a, a couple months ago when I was working at my other company, and I had no idea that I was serving this money. I was still loving Jesus. I was still reading my Bible. I was still ministering to people, but... I just realized that this money became more of a provider than God became to me. I was relying on that paycheck, and now that I don't, like, it seems like I don't make as much money, my money stretches way further than I could ever imagine it would stretch. And my, like, it comes time to pay a bill, and it's there. Thank you, Jesus. Not me. All you. And then, you know, I start to, like, just yesterday, I started to kind of look at the jobs I had going and the money I had and you know I started to get kind of dizzy a little bit and I started to get that anxious feeling in my stomach like 
I'm not hungry anymore. And, oh, geez, I don't know. I mean, how am I going to know that you're good, God, and I know that I got all this stuff, right? No. He was like, yes, Lord. Yes. It's so good, guys. I got up from that conversation with God, and I was leaping because I know he's got it. I know he's good. He's God, and he's good. If you're feeling pinned down by the enemy, by worry and everything, have him breathe on it. God, breathe on this. I don't feel you. Why don't I feel you? Why do I feel this way? Have that conversation with him. Get real with him. God, these are real feelings I'm feeling. Why? Why am I feeling this way? Take it away if it is. You know, if it's, if it's your will, take it away. Of course, it's his will. He doesn't want you to have anxiety. He wants you to be, he wants you to be at peace. People who have Jesus have something that a lot of people don't have, and that's peace. So if we're letting the enemy steal our peace, we have right to that peace. We have claim to that peace. He says he'll give us that peace. Why are we going to let somebody take it away from us? Ridiculous sometimes. You know, I mean, I'm talking to myself here. Where like, it's just ridiculous how I can just forget and let him so easily rob my peace. No. No more. I'm taking a stand. This peace God gave me, you can't take it away. So if you guys are starting to feel the world close in on you, ah, what is it like? Forceful men will lay hold on it or whatever. Just no. This is my peace. This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or, and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food? And isn't your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store up food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Woo! Can you guys believe that for yourself? He feeds the birds, man. And, they, and aren't we more important than them? Don't you think that he's going to take care of you? Isn't your body more than clothes? Aren't you more than your car? Aren't you more than your house? Aren't you more than your job? Be who he says you are. Be comfortable in who he says you are. And you'll start to thrive more in life because then your desires of your heart will be in line with his. And then you can really get business done. You can really go for it. Call all your worries. Oh, yeah. I love 27. And um, this really just... Super ring runs true. Can all of your worries add a single moment to your life? Can it? No. Then what are you worried about? <laughs> Easy to say, right? It says it right here. It can't add anything. How about that? Man, I'm so super worried about this, man. I just, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Hey, brother, that ain't going to, what are you worrying for? It ain't going to add a day to your life. I'd be like, what? <laughs> like, that's not what I want right now. You know what I mean? So what, 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 how do we position our hearts when somebody comes to us with worry, you know? Oh, hey, well, the Bible says this. Come on, man, let's, let's, let's ease in. Let's understand them. And then let's say, hey, you know what's really cool? I was reading in Matthew, right? You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of Matthew. Let's go to Matthew real quick. Let's open up the Word. Let's, let's reassure them. You're worried? I got a book right here. It's really cool. Let me see. What are you struggling with? All right. But there's also, like, the way that you approach them. You know what I mean? Where it's... Understand them first before you, um, before you try to give them a solution. You know, listen to them. I think we said that in like Romans or something, where it was like just live with them, understand them, laugh when they laugh, cry when they cry. And you can't do that unless you build a community with them. And why worry about your clothing? Oh yeah, I was going to touch base on this part. Um, yes, he gives the birds food, right? Yes, he supplies everything that he supplies for us. But um, be a good steward of what he supplies for you, you know? You can't just be like, oh, we're getting all this money, and we spend it here, and we spend it there, and we spend it here. I mean, I guarantee you, God talks to me about my finances. He's talking to you about your finances, okay? I give you this opportunity. I give you this money. What are you going to do with it? How good are you going to steward it? Um, so, yeah, he gives everything you need, but come on, let's be responsible with what he needs, what, what he gives you, you know? And why worry about your clothing? Look at all the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work hmm, or make their own clothes. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. 
And if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? Why? They're asking you, right? No, I do have faith for that. That's a challenge for me. Jesus says, why do you have so little faith? No, sir. Give me that faith. I want it. All right, wrapping it up. So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These, oh, come on now. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. Woo! Do they dominate your thoughts, guys? Do these things dominate? These are all real things, guys. Do you guys worry about what you'll eat? Do you worry about what you'll drink? Do you worry about what you'll wear? I do that sometimes, you know? What are we going to have? I mean, like, we got groceries coming up, inflation's going, we're going to have enough money to feed everything, you know? Summer school's starting, so that'll save us on lunch, you know? God, help me not to worry about that. I don't worry about that stuff. I plan for that stuff because I know you're going to provide for that stuff, but I do not worry about that stuff because you're going to bring it to me. These don't dominate my mind. I have faith for it. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And one of the best, Matthew 6, 33. Seek the kingdom of God. What? Above all else. And live righteously. Woo! And he will give you everything you need. Come on. Do you have everything you need? No? Okay. Easy. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek his face. Go for it. God, you're real. Be with me this week. Let's do some stuff. I'm excited. Sign me up. But live righteously, right? Seeking God, but not living righteously. It's just two, one step forward, two steps back, you know? Um, if you're starting to seek God, he's going to show you where you're not living righteously. So this will happen, and this. So I love it how he says, seek God above all else. So first, I was like, no, I'm going to try to live righteously first. No, it's not what he said. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and then he'll, he'll help you live righteously. There's the sanctification that happens where he reveals stuff in your heart where you're like, ooh, that's just not good. And you wouldn't know unless you were seeking him. And he'll give you everything you need. If you're seeking him, the desires of your heart will be placed there. And then he'll be like, I want to give this to you. All right, I'll wrap this up. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow it'll bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. It's like Jesus signing out. (laughs) You know what I mean? It'd be funny if somebody just kind of memorized that and said, hey, hey, Rod, just remember, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble enough for today. That's so good. All right. So if you guys are, you know, I kind of went back and forth and said some things. Um, What are you guys going through? You know what I mean? God knows. He's here. Like these worship songs and this message and and all of it was not a mistake. We're going through stuff. I'm going through stuff. Let's not just act like we're bigger than the stuff we're going through. Let's, Let's lean on our brothers and sisters and say, I really need your prayer. I really need your help really need a friend right now. You have people in your life that you know are going through stuff. Oh, edify and build them up. Brother, I'm here. Sister, I'm here. Let's go grab some coffee. How have you been? Oh, man, I'm struggling. Come here, let me hear about it. You know who can take all those worries off? The one who is. His name is Jesus. I mean, that'll be brought up. So if you think, it's funny, um, when somebody in my house used to be sick, we'd go and pray for a sick person. Because if the devil's going to try to make somebody sick, then we're going to go heal somebody that's sick. So if, if God is pushing in your life and making you feel like you're scrunched into a box, get out there and go do something. Go seek that kingdom. Go love on somebody. Just go look at somebody and be like, how are you today? You know? Because God, and I don't know if I've said this before, but um, God's been running me into a lot of lonely people. And I love it. Because it used to be people that were... Um, you know, either either sick or hurt or um, didn't even know who Jesus was, but now I'm just running into people who are just straight-up lonely people. 
and I was at like, um, I think it was like Sam's Club or Costco, and this guy comes out with a red flower, and I look over, and, and it's like an older man, and he's by himself, and God said, tell him that flower is beautiful. And I was like, weird. Okay. I know God. I know, I know you, God. I know how you work. Um, so I got out, and I shut the door, and I said, hey, man, what kind of flower is that? And he's like, oh, it's a hibiscus. And I'm like, that's a beautiful flower. Like, look how red that thing is. He kind of, like, looked at me, and I'm like, are you into flowers? And he was like, and I could see his guard. His guard just dropped, and he was like, well, you know, I, and he just went on the story about how he had a hibiscus, and he kept it alive for way longer than it should have been, and he, he would talk to it every day, and um, that one died, and then he was walking through Home Depot, and he says he really wasn't feeling like himself today. Not Home Depot, Costco. And uh, he says he really wasn't feeling like himself today, and then he saw this flower, and it kind of just brightened him up. And I just got to, and then, like, we just started talking and talking with a complete stranger about how cool this flower is. Flower means nothing to me, but it means everything to God, and it means everything to him, because God's trying to talk to him about a beautiful moment. So he's, like, he's just running me into people that are, that just need conversation, that just need somebody to love them. And then by the time I got done, it was kind of like 20 minutes of talking, and he's like, well... Um, I guess I'm going to get going. And I'm like, hey, man, it was so great to meet you today. Thanks for taking time to talk to me. Have a blessed day, okay? Jesus loves you so much. I know. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! I <laughs> did it. You know what I mean? And I didn't have to do anything but talk to this person. Genuinely. When God says, tell him that flower's beautiful. Weird. Man telling another man the flower's beautiful. But... God knows the heart. God knows where it's at. And he knows that I'm the type of guy that can do that. So he wouldn't ask me to do something I couldn't do. Sometimes he stretches you, though. But if he's asking you to do it, trust me, he knows that you can do it. You just don't know you can do it. You just don't have faith that you can do it. You don't believe that you can do it. But trust me, there's been so many things in all of everybody's life here that we thought that we couldn't do it, you know? The first time I prayed for somebody, it felt like God grabbed my elbow and like push it against the car window or whatever because I just wasn't going time after time and time. But even, like even me, like I'm something super special, but um, God speaks to me a lot and I don't, I don't act on it, you know what I mean? Um, and it sucks. But praise God for uh, obedient people. Like uh, the other time, Rod, I was like, I wanted to go pray for somebody and I was like, just didn't. And um, Rod came by and was like, let's go. And I'm just, I ended up going to the people that God told me to pray for. So it's like, um, praise God for, for brothers who can sharpen you. And then what did that do? It made me realize the position of my heart that God said, go, and I didn't go. And then when I went, it was successful because he was telling me to go. Like, come on. Like, we can just miss it. We can. We can easily overlook something that God says, go. And we can say, man, eh, maybe not. Stop. I'm talking to myself here. Stop. Stop saying that. Just go, man. All right. I'm going to pray. If anybody needs any prayer today, you need some healing in your body, you need some just a fresh refill, you just say, I don't know what I need, but just I just need prayer. If you're struggling with something, you don't have to struggle. Give it to him. Just close your eyes, see his face, put your problems in your hands, and see yourself giving it to him. God, here's my problem. Write it down. Give it to him. Because it's, you just took the struggle on for yourself and tried to be like, it's okay, I can get through this. No, you can't. You can get through it with him. You guys can get through it. Jesus, we worship you. We love you. We thank you for your presence. Holy Spirit, I ask that you just be with us in our day-to-day -day walk, our hour-to-hour -hour walk, our minute-to-minute -minute walk, our second-to-second -second walk. Let us be in tune with what you're saying. And more importantly, when we are in tune with what you're saying, let us be obedient to do it. God, I thank you for building up that boldness in us that we will do it. That when you speak to us, we will step. God, that when we have this worry, we give it to you before we worry about it. We don't take on this worry and fester on it. We say, God, 
What are we going to do? I love it, God. What are we going to do? Not what am I going to do. Let's change it. What are we going to do, God? God, I just thank you for being in our life, God. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for this church, God. I just feel the way I feel when I walk in here. I know that you have called this place home for me. And it feels so good to have a home that you dwell in. Jesus, I thank you for the leadership on Church on the Rock. I just pray that you guide them. God, I thank you for the youth on Church of the Rock, God. I ask that you, you, you burrow in and bury deep inside their heart the things that are to come for this year, God. I ask you to draw more youth and more um, people to this church so that we can, we can get a chance to love on them, God. No agenda, just you. Worship you, Jesus. We love you. There's nobody like you.